Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser. Get ready for a pizza adventure. Well, actually, this adventure is as much about history and tradition as it is about pizza itself. Now, right now, I'm standing in front of the Village Pizzeria here on Larchmont Boulevard. This is just about my favorite place to get pizza anywhere in Los Angeles. And when you go in this pizzeria, you're getting the real thing. Okay, we are inside the Village Pizzeria and a crowded pizzeria it is here. Steve, you like to see people in here, don't Every you? Every day, yes. This All right, here for Steve. You. Welcome. I've been coming here. How many years has this place been here on Larchmont Boulevard? Ten years. And you came here originally from? San Francisco. Okay, so your claim to fame is that you make the best pizzas around, and the reason they're so good, the reason so many people swear by them, is why? We feel it's a history. Uh, we've been open uh, as a company since 1979, but we do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, the old-fashioned yeah. way that and goes fun, no. way back before 1979. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, back in New York, you know, there's a difference between Italy and Brooklyn, but we'll deal with that perhaps at another time. But it's still the essence of hand-spun dough and hand-rolling and then hand preparing the pizza. So it's all about the fact that it's handmade. There's sure. nothing here that you get frozen or prepared somewhere else as far as the well, dough. In terms of, yeah, no, not the dough. Dough's the all crust, fresh, all yes, that. yes. That's Everything. done right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water, yeast, sugar, salt, flour, mix it together, and this is what we yield for the last 28 years. All right, yeah. you've been doing it for 28 years, but this is the way pizzas have been made for a long time. For a long, long time. time. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're getting ready to see firsthand right now. Okay, we're going to the back of the Village Pizzeria because as much energy as there is going on out here, we're here to visit the place where it really happens. Carlos? Hi, nice to meet you. We've been wanting to meet you all day. And Steve, this is where this is all of that originality takes place. You and Carlos are going to make for us fresh the batch. dough the original way it was done. We do it fresh every night for the night for the next day, and we can't do a thing without this workhorse right here. All right, mixer. let's get to work here. So what have we got? What we're going to do is we're going to uh, pour in the yeast uh, in the water. It's already been dissolved. Um, call yeast this is, and water. Yeah, it's live yeast as opposed to powdered yeast. Okay. And then it's very very active. So we're gonna go in with a cup of, uh, with a little uh, bit of sugar. 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 And a little bit of salt. And salt. And then we're gonna um, mix with the whisker. We're mix. Okay, so we're mixing. We're gonna break all that up. Sugar, salt, salt yeast, and water. and water. Temperature controlled water, very important. What do you mean temperature controlled? Gotta be at a specific temperature. Too cold, no good. Too hot, no good. All right, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. Now, wait a minute. What's. Now, now Carlos is gonna put in some oil. Let's look at this oil here. Extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin yeah. olive Gives oil. Gives a little body. I'm not gonna tell you everything that everything okay. does, but there it goes. All right, there All right. it goes. Now we hook up. Now what is this? What is this? This is just the uh, mix of blade. That's uh, flour. Do we put the flour no, in? No, we gotta mix a little bit. Oh, get okay. everything going a little bit. So great. you're just mixing all this liquid right now. All right. We're just getting everything kind of. That's right. Going a little bit, get everything moving along a little bit. Okay, there, well, I hate to tell you, but that's not very exciting. I well, thought we were gonna. Yeah, get ready, wait, you're gonna see it all come together. So why are you, you just mixing? Yeah, we just gotta let everything sit, the sugar, the water, the salt, the oil, kind of sits, does its little pre-chemistry, and then we're gonna get the flour in there, and then you'll see it all dance together, and in about 12 to 15 minutes, we'll have a, Beautiful ball of dough, getting ready to make some, and you'll see how we do that. And here comes the flour part of it. A whole big bag of flour. Now, is this just regular flour? Uh, this is specific flour. It's not baker's flour. It's not the same flour used in a bakery. Uh -huh. It's a pizza blended flour, which again, I can't tell you what it is because <laughs> it's a little different than what everybody else All right, uses. we're gonna close it up. Raise up the bar. And turn it on again. 
Wow, this is... Here we go, 15. Here we go. Push that minutes. button. You get it ready? There it goes. Now this, as you see it, in 15 minutes will be a beautiful ball of pizza dough. You can't see it right now, but you'll see it in 15 minutes. Boom, there it goes. There it is. Okay, now we've taken it out of the mixer, about 15 minutes of mixing. Right. And, and now, this uh, is your ball of dough. This is where we start, and then we knife, we portion, and we weigh to our desired. We make 14 inch, 16 inch, 18 inch. We make Sicilians and nine inch individuals, so every one is a different weight we make fresh. Okay, so let's so see what So today we're gonna doing. make 18 inch, which goes to the house pies. That's the biggest size we make, and the 18 inch that go um, for the house and for delivery. Okay, so we're, so we're so at what are you doing? Just you about, just weighing it over there? Yeah, we're just where we want to be, just below uh, the 18 ounces. And, All right, now um, Carlos, you're getting in there Carlos too. Carlos, there. Gotta, uh, oh, go. Carlos, look at, look at what Carlos is doing. Wow. And that's that's where it's all is. This is it. You'll now this is what you expect this to is see. It. This is it. Is is this look at the way he does that. Wow. Look how he does what he, he does doubles? Two guys got they, they have contests who does them faster and who can do doubles with left and right hand. Wow, this is very Boy, it's a very, he's really throwing he that down arms. He developed really strong arms, forearms. Where did uh, you learn how to do this, Carlos? Well, it's my teacher right here. Oh, okay. Wow. Now this looks like the way it would have been done hundreds of years Same ago. style. Uh, you probably had back in the day the uh, uh, restaurants that probably didn't even weigh because the guys were so good at what they were doing, they didn't have to scale it. They knew so it. They, they knew what feel. the feel, feel of it. Absolutely. Wow, this is really something and to you watch. Know that, any good baker will tell you the same thing. They don't measure. They do a pinch of this and a pinch of that. Now, how many of these? We go uh, through. We make about 300 a night. 300 balls all, so, all of sorted of sizes. Dough yeah. and the different sizes of dough would right. be for the different sizes of we pizza. Sell. Yeah, and we go through about three, average of 250 to 300 a day. Wow. Wow, this is really something just to watch this in action this double. see this is what i wanted to see this see is doubles? what do you mean doubles double arm rolling you want to see oh, double yeah, arm sure. rolling sure come in what do you got going here double arm bed shoulder okay we're doing a double this sees up turn sideways oh a double Two at one time. The way you threw that out there, I thought you wanted him to do a triple. A triple, yeah, <laughs> I have three arms, man, but he could if he would. I know they would try. Wow, look at this. That's hard to do. Yeah, I can't do two. And I've been in it for 16 years. And you, will, I'll have you know, this part of the evening is um, a large amount favorite because there's a lot of kids who come back here know we make dough between seven and nine. At and night. At night, every night, and they want this stuff. A piece of dough. This is Play-Doh. This is where it started, you. It well, is we like encourage, play -Doh. We encourage them, they can't eat it because it will expand, it's dangerous, but they can take it home, roll it up, put it in the refrigerator, they can make a little bagel, and in the morning they can have a bagel for breakfast. It's very sticky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this, um, the texture, the gluten, the high gluten in the, in the flour, and um, again, the, the yield of the water and the temperature, everything brings toward, sometimes it's stickier, silky, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, so it really, how we put it together is how it comes out. Yeah, there's the finished product yeah. right over so here. So now he's gonna oil them. What do you mean them oil them? You wanna oil them because they're gonna rise now. Now all your chemistry is gonna happen, so the, the oil will prevent them from drying out. We'll keep a good lubrication on them when they're sleeping tonight. And then they'll go into the proof tins. What do you mean while they're sleeping? While they're sleeping, we make it fresh, so it's gonna be used tomorrow. So um, wait a minute, you put these oiled balls, dough balls. We'll push them down. Look at this, Cameron, this is fascinating. So you're pushing it down. Right, that's proof, we proof our dough. It's, so it's a multiple proof process. Now you put it in process. here. We put them in. And you put it to sleep. Good night. Let's do one more of these. So the whole batch will go in, they're racked in, in uh, 
piles of nine. Oh, look how he does that. He just puts the oil right on. We have an assembly line that everybody knows their job. So we just go, and then it gets faster, and see how fast we can go. Look at this. Look at this. It is an assembly line. And in this case, you will have uh, 10 stacks of 18s and 15 stacks of 14s and you know, 13 stacks of 16s, and you'll add them up, and we'll have made you know, 275 of these, and we rack them in the walk-in. And tomorrow morning, Martin will come in, and he'll take out the day's stacks. After they've been sleeping. Cold. Now they're going to be in room temperature, where they're going to rise up again, as dough does at room temperature. Then we proof them down again. And then there's a couple of secrets of Village Pizzeria of how many times we proof our dough. Here, let's open this up and look at this. This is sleeping dough. This is going to say goodnight. Let's put the top on. And then it racks. And he'll take the whole stack. And you'll see the stack line in the walk-in if you'd like to go in there. Shh. Shh. They're sleeping. The sleeping That's pizza it. dough. That's it. That's where they They'll are. They'll be there all night. All night, and then we'll come in in the morning at and about take nine. Take them out, wake them up. Wake them up. Shh, Bring them out shh, room shh, temperature shh, shh, to proof shh, to rise. Shh, shh. They're sleeping. Rise and shine. This Time sleeping pizza dough. Time to get up. Is getting ready for a rude awakening. We're coming back here, and I'm giving it to it's Martin. Martin, how you doing, Martin? Okay. All right. This is what Martin yeah. does. So now Martin takes the dough out in the morning. Look at this camera. And and he's going to just uh, start his uh, stretching process. This now takes what did he do? He put he it. He put in it in a little flour. It's a little easier to work with for us. Uh -huh. We make a lot of pizzas a day. Right now he's creating a little bit of a crust ridge, which we like to do. Stretching out oh, a little bit, and this is old school. This is old fashioned. No, no uh, taco press. There's no flat. There's no roller. It's all done by hand. So he is. Is this what size pizza is? It's going to be a 14 inch. Okay, so there it goes. Oh, there he goes. That's now some old like to school. throw it. That's for show. Um, but this is this is where it's at. There's Look no at measuring. There's now, no. How does he know that that's going to come out to a, a 14 inch? He knows. He's made uh, thousands and thousands of pizzas. He knows. Wow. This is going to be a cheese. Yeah, plain cheese. Plain cheese. He stretched it out. And for simplicity, we'll just go with plain cheese. That's what I, uh, I think is the essence of pizza: a good sauce, good cheese, and, and a great dough. And in the oven it goes. And that's the complete process. Wow, look at that big one. What what size is that back there? That's the there? house pie, 20 inch. Oh, that wow. These slices here, which will now be, toppings will be added to these. I got you. And we're going to go, because people don't have the time. Let's see that again. How does he, these are all, these these are all filled with that sleeping yes. dough. Yeah, yeah. Can you do that again for us, sure. Martin? Can you make us a big one? A big one? Yeah, yeah, yeah a big pie. one, a house pie. Look at this. So it goes in the flour. Now, is that old school? No, that's really new school. And I'm telling you that um, any, any um, old-fashioned Italian baker will freak out at this stage because they didn't put it in flour. It, it really uh, in, intimidates the flour. It also brings a little bit more um, a, a, a flour into the oven, which will cause the oven to get a little black, which the bottom of the pizza will get a little more black. But, but we that's use okay screens. to do that. But it shakes off. When you spin it and you work with it, it's going to shake off. Oh, so look, now a look lot at of it's him. Here he goes. Off. Oh, boy. And that's why we use the screen so it won't go right into the deck of the oven and get the oven very dirty. Look at that. Now, here's the lesson we gave you in chemistry. The glutens is what keeps it sticking together, which looks that's like almost like material. That's why it felt material. so sticky exactly. in my hand. Right. Are we going to make another? I that's sure hope. You have customers who are going to eat all this. I can't we eat all these through, pizzas. We go through about a minimum of 50 house pies a day, which is eight slices on a pie, so 50 times eight. It's about 400 house slices a day. Wow. This is, oh, wow. No, it, is you no, know, this is like watching an artist at work, the way he does that's all what I tried, of this. That's what I wanted to express to you. Yeah. They're chowing down on the pizza. Best pizza I've had. Now, do you sit here and watch them? Oh, it's it's amazing. It's 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 like the old time pizza palaces we used to go to. You can watch the guy. He 
pats the pizza, toss, tosses it up, and, and then here it is. So Wonderful. that's as much fun as eating the pizza itself. Oh, it's great, yes. You're an old-fashioned sort of person, oh. aren't you? I like that kind of stuff. I like great food, and this is great food. <laughs> what? Is she a family member no, or what? Not. Thank you. Thank you. It's the first Thank time you. I've been here. And my friend, she told us about it, and we just happened to stumble upon it. And oh, wow, and you hit the jackpot. We will definitely be back. All right. Thank now, you. enough of this commercial we're doing here for your place. The point of this whole adventure, and we're just starting our adventure now. This is not really the main show right here because for years you have been talking with me mm -hmm. about the wonder of doing it the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this is not the way most pizzas are made in the world today, is it? I think we can agree. In most businesses, things are changing. There are many needs to cut back and it affects our business as well. So the pizza business is not necessarily in many cases staying true to its roots. It's not making it Trust the old-fashioned way. At Dodger Stadium, those 16-inch pizzas that they sell are not made by hand. Trust me. Yeah, and a lot of other places as well. Let's exactly. just don't knock on Dodger exactly. Stadium. Yeah. It's, no, no, it's no. In general, all over every, the place. every volume, every volume performance of this is of this category is compromised now. Yeah. There, there are a lot of people not even making their dough, you. There's yeah. pizzerias in this city not making their pizza dough. They buy it made. Really? It cuts out a lot of time, certainly cuts out employee hours. Yeah, it's less labor yeah. intensive. Yeah, it's very labor intensive. And a lot of people can't tell the difference unless you're used to eating the real thing. It's two guys, two hours every night. So you can add just that to make up the just the dough. Yeah. So five, seven nights a week, 358 days a year, you add up those hours and you could see where people are trying to cut back. Well, we're privileged to have seen it done the old-fashioned way, but as we said, our adventure is just beginning because now Steve and I are leaving Larchmont Boulevard and going to the next stop on this honest-to-goodness pizza adventure. Okay, our pizza adventure continues, and it continues in a big way because now Steve and I have come. Welcome to the International Pizza Expo here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. This is all things pizza. I'm wearing my pizza credential. You've got yours on, Steve. First off, it smells like pizza in here. <laughs> And Steve, what are we looking at here? Look, as far as you can see. This is the Super Bowl. This is the granddaddy of our business, Yul. What is down there? This is everything that is concentrated into the business for uh, the, the uh, pizza. The, the pizza business per se, not food service, but pizza. It, it's a specialty for uh, everybody in, in my business. This is, this is the Super Bowl. So we're just gonna wander down in here to the Super Bowl of pizzas. Yeah, you got everything. And Packaging, have, uh, ingredients, canned goods, cheeses, everything you could think of, and you'll be eating, so get ready. This is a pizza extravaganza, and there's where we're going, right down there. All things pizza here in Vegas. Okay, right off the bat, we have come to a booth that does not make Steve happy. Right? This, this takes another step out of the process. And what, if what does this do? This is a dough press. Forgive me, this will be like the quesadilla, and this will take the round ball that we work so hard uh -huh. uh, and flatten it. That's Without it. the human being being involved in it, with his hands mm -hmm. ever touching. No human being. So now you're not going to be rude to these people. No, I've no, got to go over no, and find out no, what I want no. them to try to sell me the <laughs> okay. product. I'll, I'll, I'll be a good boy, but I this promise. This does not make Steve happy. <laughs> it's just different. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Great, Hill. How are you? All right, show us what you're doing. You just had some dough in there. Can oh, you can yes. you bring it out? Oh, sure thing. So this, this is the dough. Yes, this is a preformed dough ball. Preformed dough ball. You remember we were doing that back at the house? By hand. By hand. Okay. So this is preformed. Yes. All right, it goes in here. And does this squash down? It sure does. Let's see how that works. Ah, 
That flattens it. Yes, and uh, cooks it. Yes. Oh well, no, it doesn't cook it. Uh, it just forms the uh, crust. Uh huh. So it just flattens it, and that's what this does right here. Yes. How does this work? Does this just go? Manual. It's just a manual squasher. Here's a smaller squasher, and let's look at it squashed. There oh, it is. That. That's about a 14 inch. Yeah. And uh, you see, do you remember the difference that we had when my guys were doing it? We had a crust line on the outside. See, he likes to throw them the old-fashioned way. Well, you know, we've uh, we made dark. a few of those guys uh, upset by this machine, but because uh, he's very upset, it definitely saves say. time and and labor. That's so this good. saves time, and it saves labor. Yes, all of these do. Yes, um, any uh, unskilled labor can. Uh, Form a dough crust. They don't have to toss it. It's you heard the word. unskilled labor. You heard the word. He said it, not me. <laughs> See, I feel like I'm in the middle of the of the of a well, war going well, on here. Well, you know, dough throwing is an art, and you know, not everybody does it. Correct. Okay, now we have come to AM Manufacturing Company. We have hooked up with your name, sir. Ed Mintz. And what are we getting ready to do, Ed? We're going to work a dough rounder. We're going to round some dough balls. Round some dough balls, yes. which happens. How do you do that? Let's put okay. them in there. In this case, you'd be dividing by hand. You'd be taking a knife and cutting dough pieces, mm -hmm. putting the dough piece onto a scale, getting the right weight that you want, and throwing it into a rounder. And as fast as you can throw the dough pieces in, no matter what shape and no matter what size, look at this. They're going to come up. Oh, look! Like it goes in there and it comes out round. <laughs> yep. Now see, my guy here is an old-fashioned guy. We do it all by hand. He oh, does it all by hand. He didn't believe me. Oh, that. Is he old-fashioned? <laughs> That's old-fashioned. I mean, uh, <laughs> in today's day and age, you want volume. You got a machine to do the work of what people used to do, and so here it is. So how does this work again? Look at this. Okay. Here's all the dough. Just take some raw dough now. I typically it's being cut by a knife, and put on a scale. Look at this. You but scale no matter, it so you get exactly the same amount right. in each ball. If you want a 10 ounce dough piece. But you have a scale cutter slicer as well. Right. We have that also. We'll go All look right. at that. Maybe we can show, that, show you that next. You just throw it in there. It just goes in there. Throw another one in there. <laughs> and then it's going to come right out here in just a minute. It's like a softball yeah. pitch, uh, like it's a baseball a, it's pitch. It's amazing. Machine. Hold on. It's coming. Hold on. Here it comes. And here comes another one, and there. As fast as you can throw them in, no matter what shape it's in. But the human, the human never makes the balls. It, that's right. The, the human has to still cut the dough, but all the work, the carpal tunnel type bad news work, is cut out by this machine. Wow. So it's, it's very wrist friendly. And actually strong arm muscles are not created anymore. So we all have skinny arms now. <laughs> yeah. Nobody goes to the doctor anymore for But a this is pump. very popular. Yes, Doing very it this popular. way. Yes, it is. This, See? This machine's been around for over 20 years. You're behind the times. Well known in the I'm industry. I'm an antique. We're antiquated. <laughs> well, there's more here too, isn't there? Eight thousand and change. Eight thousand dollars. Yes. For a what is this called again? A roundomatic. Roundomatic. Perfectly round pizza balls. Anywhere from one ounce to 32 ounces, whatever you need. Now this is interesting. What's going on over here, Ed? Okay, this is a dough divider and rounder. It's the uh, Scalomatic S300. So what does this do? Okay, this is going to take a batch of dough coming from your mixer. You're going to dump it right into the hopper up to 80 pounds and you're going to uh, divide dough and you're going to round it. So this cuts the dough as well. Yes, it does. Right, it cuts guys, it. You needed a manual cut. This is a cutter and a roller. So this replaces even more of oh, the yeah. human yep. uh, yeah. aspect involved. Oh, yes. So can you cut some for us? Yes. So uh, we're going to turn the machine on now. You're going to hear the machine. <laughs> oh, boy. You can hear the slicing going on. This is a piston divider, so there's a piston, piston involved. divider that slices it and rounds it. And it just comes right off down here. A little bit of a tail. You're, you're smiling. All right, 
Love your show in well, California. Are you a pizza guy? We're just getting ready to open one in August. So now, we're, we're are looking, you going to get one of these machines? Well, we're, we're looking at sort of labor-saving machines and things like that. Now, why do you want to save labor? Labor let's doesn't see. call in sick. Let's see. Let's see. Well, I got. I got eleven. Se got eleven cents in my pocket. That's you know. That's all I got. So, so I gotta save my labor cost. So you're not particularly interested in doing it the old-fashioned way. You just wanna. You wanna. You wanna cut. You wanna get the well, production you know, going. Yeah, but you know there are some parts you don't want to save on, and that's the quality of the dough. You can. You know. You. You. You do that mixing. The. You know. The way you want to do it. But the, the quality of the dough isn't impacted by this. It's going to stay the same quality. This just saves you time. Yeah, you're you know? not interested in rolling and cutting the balls yourself. Hell no. Oh. My age? Are you kidding? Yeah, I, I want to see, I want to see the, this dough come off, and then I want to see the green paper dough come off the machine. That's what I'm interested in saving. Any way you cut it, it's the dough. Any way you cut it, it's the dough. At my age, I'm not going into the pizza business for, the, for the, my health, believe me. See, are you all having a debate here? No, where he's telling me about the sequence that, that comes out of this, that all these machines can get together and come from the beginning to right. essentially so you a pizza can in a box. Automate the yeah. whole situation. Take ten yeah. guys' jobs. Yeah. Definitely, you can. The whole thing can be automated. 100% right from the mixer. Right. You don't even need people the loading the, the mixer. Box. With ingredients out the door. Right. And then what we're hoping for is instead of delivering it, we're hoping we can figure out a way to email it to people. <laughs> He's setting all of the dials here. And what are you doing here? A little Ed? bit of oil. So we're putting this on a. A hot press. A hot press. Right. And this is going to be a 12-inch crust we're going to make, starting with a dough ball. Just place it on the press. Right here. And where does that go? It's going to index underneath the uh, hot here press head. There it goes. Head. Look. And all of a sudden, you're going to have not only a crust, but a cut crust with a raised edge. So uh, it just presses it, and it goes right down. And there it is. So once this again, this one is a little more sophisticated because you do see the crust ridge. Uh -huh. So it did it did define a crust ridge, which is very impressive. I got to tell you, it, it looks real nice. And then it conveys on down, and it's going to get cooked, and it, it it will continue along the line. It'll continue Whoa. along the line when they put another machine in there to cook it, put ingredients on it, and cook it and put it in the box. Well, Steve, what's wrong with this? Uh, it, I mean, really, this is this is. This it's it's the difference between now and then, and it may be time to consider change, but change is tough to do when you have learned the old-fashioned way. Person eating it, this will they be able to tell a difference? Um, probably not. A sophisticated consumer may, but probably not. The cook would know. The the old timers would but know. But nobody else would. No, it, it, this is impressive. I got to tell you, this just blows my mind because it's 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 new wave, man. It's it's automation again, taking away people's jobs, and they'll be the first to admit it. This is on my hand. I can't get it off. It's kind of just. Can I help you? Yeah. This there is, you go. This is a typical hot press pizza. You can see. You can get the raised edge with it. Yeah. Um, you can get whatever size you need. This happens to be about a 12-inch crust. This is this right here. If people bought all the things that you have right here, right. This is literally one-stop shopping. Yes, it is. From pizza dough from the very beginning to the very end. Right. The only thing that would go behind this is either an oven or a or a freezer. That's it. Which also could be totally automated. Now and this would be perfect for Dodger Stadium making those six inch pizzas. If I did that, I'd get a commissary, I'd buy this machine. Absolutely, absolutely. But for uh, for me, for mom and pop, for the whole, for our community, for the kids to watch us making the dough, for the interaction, to have employees, to support families, to make trade and commerce, I, I, I do so it the old way. room for both. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're not trying to put him out of business. No, we, we'll sell him one machine instead of three machines. <laughs> Maybe that'll keep him happy. <laughs> My first taste test of the day, and we're standing in front of, it says, the products with the real pizzeria taste. Nation Pizza Products, uh, we're a Chicago company, and uh, we, start, we started in the pizzeria business. In fact, we still own and operate pizzerias in Chicago. But this uh, is frozen pizza. That's a frozen pizza. That's our new uh, flatbread uh, pizza. Now, do you think the average person can tell the difference 
between frozen pizza and pizza that's made by hand right there on the spot? I, I think there's uh, differences more in the cooking than the, the product itself. You'd be surprised how many pizzerias right now are using a par-baked crust just because they can get uh, a better product than trying to make, bake it themselves. So they're getting the crust already made. Right. Right. So they don't have to make the crust. Absolutely. They don't have to do any of that. None of it. None of it. It's all taken care of for them. They don't have to worry about proofing or mixing or having a mixer there or if the, the quality of help that they have is good enough to put it what together. What would you say about the pizza place that still does it the old-fashioned way? God bless them. They're artisans. You know, they love what they do, and that's what, that's what pizza is. It's passion. It's a passion for, for loving what you... What, so you're what, saying there's room for homemade pizzas? There's room for frozen pizzas? There's no such thing as bad pizza. I'm going to have another bite of this just to prove that your frozen pizza is as good as homemade pizza. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And it is. Steve, come over here. Frozen pizza. Hey, Steve. How are you? How's it? And it's Hi, good. Hi, Chef Sam. Yeah, it, uh, you know that the... He's one of the old guys who makes it the yeah. old way. When I was little, I made pizzas out of ragu, um, polio, cheese, and uh, English muffins. Sure. And the dough toaster oven. Nice comfort feeling. Yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely works. So the two of y'all can be friends? Yeah. Can oh, you shake hands? Oh, can you yeah, shake definitely. hands? <laughs> the homemade guy and the frozen guy. It's a pizza love fest it's, here. It's world peace. That's there what are Porsches, Ferraris, there are Volkswagens, there are Oldsmobiles. We go out and buy what we like. And that's the same in the food business. Well said, Steve. <laughs> well said. They're smiling from ear to ear behind the olive booth here. California olives. Correct. Now, so what do you do? You, you, you're you trying to sell your olives to all these pizza people Correct. to put on their pizzas. Correct. We're trying to make sure that they use California olives versus the imported olives. Yeah, we don't want to use imported. No. We want to go strictly California. Tell me why, real quickly. Well, actually, this gentleman's been in the Get olive industry. Get me excited for about over California olive. Well, the California olive has a unique uh, flavor, texture. Uh, the, there's only a couple of varieties in California that are used for processing, and uh, they're strictly a table olive, and they process so much better than a lot of the imported olives do. So these are the best. What is this? That's a Sicilian style California olive. And what is this? That's our sliced uh, black ripe. California I've olive. Seen a lot of these on that's, pizza. That's the that's main pizza topping. Pizzas. And that's, what's this? That's our Sicilian stuffed. Uh, I think these go in martinis, don't they? Very well. Very well, yeah. I've never tried it, but, <laughs> but, but they go very well, yes. So when you buy olives, make sure you get, you know what you're buying for. Right. These are for the pizzas, these are for the martinis. martinis that's right. That's correct. Thank you. From olives to sun-dried tomatoes, and are these California sun-dried yes, tomatoes? Of yes, course they are. they are. Yes, they are. Get me excited about sun-dried tomatoes. Well, you know, a sun-dried tomato, it gives you a completely different flavor profile than a fresh tomato. Uh-huh. Uh, and you can, obviously, if you do northern Italian cooking, it's the perfect application. But what about on pizzas? Pizza? We have a toss and topping product, Look which is right here. The toss and topping is uh, in a mixed oil with an Italian seasoning. Won't scorch or burn as it goes through the pizza oven. Uh -huh. So you get to have a nice, moist, full-flavored sun-dried tomato. Steve, do you use this? Absolutely. I don't use this product because I use what my distributors bring me. We'll definitely consider it California, but I do use sun-dried tomatoes, and it's a big ingredient. Yeah, that's, a, that's an important right. ingredient as far as pizzas go. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. All yeah. right. We put in our... Plug for California sun-dried tomatoes. Cookies, frozen chocolate chip cookies. Yes. Which uh, go into the... Go right into a, into a, a deep dish pan. Uh -huh. And we're gonna, we've got a carrier that goes over the top of it to protect it from the temperature. Uh -huh. And we're running it right through the impinger oven. So you can have a fresh baked cookie. All right, so you get the... So a pizza place would order the frozen cookies. They right. would come, you'd keep them in the freezer. Yes. Then you'd take them out Put them on the pan and run them through the oven. Run them right through the impinger oven. That way now, you have a fresh baked cookie. When did 
the cookie and the pizza business kind of come together? Well, we really started noticing that uh, desserts are a really underdeveloped category within the pizza chain. So we wanted to come up with a platform that we could get everybody right into a, you know opportunity for incremental sales and get them into the dessert business. So to sell something more than pizza. Right. And what does this do? Just go right through the. It goes right into the oven. You put a little protective carrier on the top. And you set it right here and it'll go through and when it comes out the other end you'll have a fresh baked cookie. And he's putting them in the old-fashioned way in just a little kind of a heater oven there. Yeah, this is uh, this is just a standard oven that we have that runs on 110 so you can plug it into a standard outlet. It takes about 10 minutes to heat up. Cookies take about 16 minutes to bake in here. So there may be more cookies moving into the pizza market. Absolutely, that's our hope. Cookies are the number one, are the number two dessert in this country, second only to ice cream. So it's an easy way uh, to get into the desserts and uh, increase your check average. Pizzas and cookies. Absolutely. Nugget ice. Chewable Nugget ice. ice. It's chewable ice. So is that the newest thing now? It, it's been around at Sonic restaurants for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? People like it. They come back to the store just to get the ice. For the so restaurant. you're connected in with the pizza people. Yes, we are. On chewable. Chewable ice, beverage. Every every pizza place is going to have a beverage center. Wow. <laughs> what do you think? You, you like it? Best ice I've you, had today. You wouldn't think that people would like ice, but they like that ice. Now let's follow up a little bit more on this ice thing, because we were having fun with this, but this is serious. This is the kind of, this is the hard ice here. This is cubed ice. Cubed ice. Commercial cubed ice. This is... Nugget ice. And people really do... It's chewable ice, and people actually go back to a restaurant just because of that just ice. Just because of the ice. Yeah, it sounds silly. So this is just another way that pizza restaurants... They can differentiate. Compete with yeah. each other because if you got the chewable ice, people will actually come to your pizza restaurant. It's the preferred ice, so they'll go back to the restaurant just to get the ice, just to get drinks, and then they'll get pizza. Now, what kind of pizza is this? This is actually a mushroom chicken pizza that's cooked on the Lincoln uh, Fast Bake Oven, uh -huh. the new oven that's come out by Lincoln. That's a four-minute pizza that you're holding. A four-minute pizza. Four-minute pizza, fastest in the industry. Now, you know what? Uh, there's a, there are a lot of samples here today. How much pizza can you eat? before it all starts, before your taste buds are shot out. Oh, I can tell you this, it doesn't look like anybody's taste buds are shot yet because they're eating it right up. They keep coming. They just keep coming, <laughs> absolutely. I've been looking for these guys all my life. <laughs> what are you selling over here? Well, we're selling a starch blocker, love my carbs. So you can eat all the pizza you want and 50% of the carbs will be converted to nothing. You're blocking the carbs out of pizza. That's out a tall pizza. order. Right, we've got the owner of the company right this here. This is revolutionary. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's a product called Starch Light that it binds to the alpha amylase enzyme and keeps the carb from digesting. I hope you've got a good solid patent on this. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> you better, you're working on it. You better get that wrapped up before you display it here at the pizza convention. Yeah, you probably got a good point there. No, yeah. We've, 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 wow, there, but it's yeah. a great idea. I love my love carbs. My carbs. Life tastes mixes. good. You put it right on there and it takes 50% of the carbs out right of out the, of the pizza. pizza. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. I feel like this is almost a sacrilege, but here we are in front of a cheese distributor from Wisconsin. That's correct. Now, how are you competing with California cheese? We compete with uh, every other competitor, whether they're in California, Wisconsin, or New York, or points in between. Because when you talk about pizzas, cheese is a very important ingredient. Yeah. It's important, you're right. And it's important from the standpoint of how it marries towards all of the other ingredients that make pizza. You got three basic in, uh, issues that you make pizza with. You start with the crust, you have tomatoes, and you have cheese. That's what you build the pizza on. But cheese has the ability, should have the ability of having flavor, but how does it marry up and with all of the ingredients when you present and distinguish your pizza from others? It's all about the customer, 
That's right. And it's all about the cheese. California tomatoes. We've got all the tomato products out here. Yes, sir. Everything from peeled to pizza sauce to six in one, which is our the finest tomatoes packed in the United States. And these are all from California. California. Yes. And do you use all yes, of these products? Yes, I, I use a little bit of these products. I use Bunta, which is a high-end pizza sauce. Uh -huh. And uh, the different uh, textures. Right. Of well, these, some though. a little bit more thicker. Uh, uh, and uh, the variety is, uh, again, I keep making the same reference. There's the, 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 the really great, and then there's a little, and price is an issue. You have a little less expensive, and, and it's also the degree of thickness. But tomatoes are very important to pizzas. It's 40% of the flavor. You can't have a pizza without, a to, without tomatoes, nope. can you? seven percent of the cost, 40% of the flavor. 7% of the cost, 40% of, of the, the flavor. flavor. Correct. Who figured that out? <laughs> Some pizza guy. <laughs> now, is this homemade pizza yes, or frozen is. pizza? This is homemade. Can you tell the difference? Absolutely. How, now, how can you tell the difference? It's just a drastic difference. <laughs> Obviously, you're into homemade pizzas. <laughs> what kind of business are you in? No, we're actually just here, a friend of mine. I'm uh, just kind of right, hanging oh. along, along oh, for you're a ride. Just here to. <laughs> they're, no, they're not the, oh look, we're standing in front of the bar here. These guys don't have anything to do with pizzas. You don't even have any credentials. <laughs> you got them all. They're all in that bag. <laughs> I hijacked the show. <laughs> they go to school at UNLV. They're just here to eat. Okay, we're standing here watching this DVD of pizzas just being churned out. You right. do it by the numbers, don't you? We do up to 300 a minute. And what? 300 a minute. And it'll run 20 hours a day. For whom? Who? Any of the large frozen manufacturers uh, all across the states. And, uh, well, we've got machines all around the world. 300 pizzas a minute. A minute, a minute continuous. And you, I make wow. And you do what? I make 300 a day in a 10 hour shift. Well, wow. in a minute, you can go home. You'll be done. <laughs> so you're you're doing this for the frozen people, for the yes, ones that people production. buy in grocery stores? Well, we've got smaller machines as well. You know, if you're do just getting into it, we've got the smaller machines at 30 a minute, but then we've got uh, the larger ones that do up to 300. And do you think it tastes the same? I think it tastes. Uh, I think it tastes the same, and you have less less uh, handling of the product, so it's probably actually more sanitary than uh, than having somebody do it by hand. Wow! And your palate can. It's very hard to tell the difference. It's just ingredients, so. Yeah. You don't need somebody handling it to have it taste better. And it's a measure of portion control. Portion control, so it's consistent. Every time it's going to taste the same. Okay, this is very interesting. What do we have here, sir? What we have is a uh, automated uh, pizza, what we call a pizza spinner, and it will take uh, a do uh, pizza dough ball and automatically spin it into a uh, flat pizza. Now, that where does the dough ball come from? It comes from our co-extrusion encrusting machine. Look at this machine. All of these products off of the same machine. All of this came out of came out of this machine this can machine. make all of these things absolutely absolutely what do you do just set the you, set the yes we have dough on one side and we have filling on the other co extrudes it and crust it puts product so it's all the automated all automated absolutely well let's put it in the spinner because you've never seen a spinner have you no i have not all right this is this looks like something from outer space here <laughs> So you're just putting a little bit of dough on it. A little bit of dusting. Uh, a dusting. A little dusting flour. Then you put this Look inside at this. the dough, dough spinner, pizza spinner. Turn it on. Oh my gosh. Look at that thing. That is amazing. And here it comes. Look. Best pizza, best pizza in the world. Perfect. Perfect round, thickness the same every and time. And every one will look exactly the same. Exactly the same. Wow. The pizza spinner. spinner. Yes, sir. Okay, these guys, you distribute what? Pizza supplies, anything down from the flour, the pizza dough, the sausage, the sauce, everything. Olives, jalapenos, we've, pepperoni. We've, pepperoni. We've seen a lot of stuff here today, but our big debate is this thing between the homemade pizzas, the old-fashioned kind that you do by hand, 
and the kind that seem to be more and more, you know, they're making them with the, the machines. They're, they're just shooting, shooting them, out. them out. They're frozen. Is there a difference? There's more of a, you could tell a little bit of the cookie cutter flavor maybe, but they're getting better now where you can't even tell the difference at times. They're using the recipes from these homemade people. They're duplicating it and it's getting very, very good. So see, it's getting, the line is getting I more. To, I would have to agree. I would have to agree. See, he does it the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. He's the little old pizza maker who does it the old He puts fashion. the love, the love, and that's the thing that really counts. When you put your heart and your love into it, you taste it. You taste the quality. It's like your mom's cooking. Again, you're putting love. I mean, it could be anything, and you put your heart into it, and believe it or not, you feel that soul. Can you tell the difference in a you, pizza made with love and a pizza that you, comes out of a you frozen... Can, you can feel the heart. You can feel the soul. You can, it's perfect. It, it's, it's just, you just feel it. You just feel it, and then you can, you can feel the, the machine shooting out. You know, you can taste that where it's just, you know, you're just eating something to satisfy your hunger compared to satisfy the, the deep down hunger feeling that's Look different from man. the love. This is great. But it's true. It's true. It's just like, you know, uh, the, comparing to him, I would understand, you know, why you're making it authentic, homemade, My down. Is a, is a Broadway play. Yeah. They come in to watch us do the whole thing with the stretching. They watch the kids come watch the dough process. It's not a hidden kitchen. It's a it's a front view kitchen. So it's part of the ambiance. It's part of well, what there's we a, there's a little bit of everything here. Sure is. It runs the whole gamut yep. from just shooting them out to doing it with love. That's true, and I agree. I and you're agree. selling to both sides, aren't you? I'm just, I'm just selling. That's the thing. I'm a sell, sell, sell. Push, push, push. You know, Jack Mart just push, push, push. So we got to, whoever wants to buy from homemade to fast food, you know, we just sell. You know, we just sell. We're ending up with Disco Buffalo Wings here at the Pizza Expo. Where is the traditional Italian Music, where's the old school, well, Steve? Salvatore and Giuseppe, they, uh, they sold and they retired and, and uh, their sons took over and they sell buffalo wings. <laughs> this is amazing what we have seen yeah. here today yeah. because what we have seen is the new way of looking at it. It's progress. Bottom line, Bottom line. efficiency, exactly. production, you said it. volume. I mean, people are still interested in making a good product but, but all more interested of in making other the bottom line. factors are coming in. More and more and more, bottom line. Productivity, well, efficiency, depending on your business, yeah. This has been absolutely Lightning, fascinating. Huh? Thank you very much. Thank We've you. seen it Thank the old-fashioned way, the hands-on yeah. way at your place on Larchmont Boulevard, yeah. Yeah. and we've seen all the new cutting-edge ways of doing it here yeah. at the Pizza Expo, and I guess the conclusion is if there is still room for both. The choice is still yours. To coexist. Right, right, right. And there is a difference, but that difference in taste is getting even more, ever more slight. Yeah, yeah. It really gets down to economics now. Yeah, I hate to say it. I do hate to say it, but it's true. Well, Bottom let's line. end on a positive note. We've had a lot of good pizza here today. We've eaten a lot of food. We have We've certainly done that. We've had a good time, that. and we have completed our pizza adventure on Larchmont Boulevard and in Las Vegas and had a great time. I hope you've learned as much about pizza as I have. It's a whole nother world out there, the world of pizza. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, you. It's been a joy. Thank you so much. The World Pizza Games, and part of those games are, what do you call this that you're doing, Casey? This is called Pizza Toss, an acrobatic freestyle competition. Now, you do this for a living. I do this every day. Wow, and at your pizza place, do people come just to watch you? Yes, they do. It brings in a lot of business to my pizzeria. Because this is kind of, somehow or another, this is synonymous with old style. It's, it's eye-catching, you would say. Yeah. I mean, you never really see people going like this right in front of your face and never know where it's going to go with the dough, you know? Wow. So you want to see more of it. So you can do all kinds of tricks with it, like go underneath your legs, do all crazy stuff for people, because they'll love it. Like you have a smile on your face right now. Yeah. Exactly. What is it that makes people so intrigued with this? Well, I mean, some people don't even hand toss their pizzas, and you go into places where you see hand tossing, it's cool. But when you see something that's out of the ordinary, basically like whipping it around or going really high like that vertically or doing other things with it, people love to see it. It's entertainment. Do people, they love to see you drop one every once in a while? Don't drop it from people. Drop it on your own time. <laughs>
<laughs> now, I have got it stuck on the ceiling on like stuff like that, throwing it too oh, high. Oh, you threw it up and it got threw, stuck. Yeah, it got stuck. But other than that, but I threw that one down after I got it down. So. Give us your best shot right here. My best shot, like trick? Yeah. Huh. Let's see. What do you want? Here you go. Oh, oh my that. gosh. It's what? all part of the World Pizza Games here at the Pizza Expo. Thanks a lot, Casey. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.